modern understandings of the natural world involve all of these uh, approaches that Newtonian science, that the original Enlightenment science just didn't include. And so for me to try to work all this out and try to figure out what I want to do with my life, what kind of profession I want to, uh, or hopefully vocation that I want to uh, apply myself to, I have to take all this into consideration. Um, and I think I want to, what I want to do is, is go to medical school, but um, a school of osteopathy, which um, I haven't read much about, but I've read enough to understand the basic approach of it. Um, I really just heard about it a few weeks ago, and it's an alternative to an MD because uh, it's called osteopathy. What they really focus on is keeping the body in a, in a state of health because they, they feel that the body is a naturally self-sustaining, self-healing system, and if we maintain the blood circulation by making sure that the posture is correct and that the, uh, none of the muscle systems are tightened uh, for no reason if you're not, because we're holding attention, and then see that leads into the psychology of the whole thing because we tighten certain muscles in our body based on certain emotions that we're, we are rejecting and if we can loosen the muscles well that's connected to the emotion so but then part of loosening the muscle is changing the way we uh, feel or accept or come to understand our feelings up here you know the emotion is in the body and the feeling occurs when the mind tries to cope with it when the conscious structure of our awareness starts to try to understand things so I think I want to go to med school and I have to be sort of inaugurated into or not inaugurated but uh, accepted into uh, you know I want to call it a cult because that seem to, seems to have a negative connotation and it's, I'm not trying to imply that it's just an institution much like a church you know you wear a white coat when you're a scientist like uh, priests wear wo robes because you're basically being initiated into a priesthood of scientists to become a doctor, you have to understand physics, chemistry, biochemistry, organic chemistry. Uh, you have to know how to be a scientist, basically. And how to, in a sense, treat the body like a machine. But then, see, that's where this new science, this new understanding of the physical world, hasn't yet been applied even to the biological world. We're still thinking of bodies and organisms in terms of genes, because that's the physical stuff that's the code the, the figure the ground that we can manipulate and design and control but then there's the part of the organism that's actually alive and you can say well the dna is what gives the life its its directions its blueprint and they can't disobey the, the blueprint but you know what are bones without uh, the flesh that that surrounds them and without the the organ systems that uh, grow themselves mysteriously i mean is that the genes that are just making that poof out of nowhere? I mean, no, that's a relationship between the gene and the world that is very profound. And that is such a high state of organization and complexity that for us to pretend like we, which we assume somehow we are this mind that just arises mysteriously from this organic compound, basically like um, God said when he implanted a soul into us. So, you know, science, they wear white coats, priests, they wear their robes, then they both assume that there is this objective disembodied soul that we can view the world through and gather real knowledge about it. The truth, the truth in itself that we can know as human beings, we can know it literally, the truth. That idea, I think, that's still monotheistic religion. And a lot of atheists still believe this idea, that there is one truth. Either it's, it's logic or it's empirical investigation or it's math or whatever. But see, those themselves are not sources of truth. Those are numerical, linguistic concepts and structures that have sometimes little to do with life itself as we live it, as we experience it. We need to reconceptualize what a conception is, what a concept is, what, a, um, what language is, and what thinking is. Because thinking is not this universally um you know are all people as healthy as all other people you know is an american 
who eats organic food and exercises every day just as healthy as a an African person who's starving in Darfur? I don't think so. And if our minds are not this disembodied essence that floats off in, in some metaphysical heaven or godly soul space, but is embodied, then we can be, some of us can be more intellectually, mentally, rationally healthy, meaning our feelings and our minds are, are in sync, our hearts and our intellects are functioning as a holistic piece of, of the whole that understands its role in the whole. So I want to be a doctor and focus on integral medicine. That sounds very interesting.